Now back in May when OnePlus released the OnePlus 6, it just took them a week's time to release the developer preview 1 of Android P. Now at that particular time, this particular software was not that usable. There were a lot of bugs and a lot of issues with it. So a lot of people shied away from it. But come DP3, well, a lot of things have changed. So much so that I'm using it as my daily driver for more than a week and I'm pleasantly surprised by all the inclusions, especially when we have a camera which is as good as the stable ROM. The animations are awesome, the battery life is on par and everything is great. So that is what we are going to do today. We are going to review this particular software and we will see what are the good things that are coming to us in the next table update and what are the bugs that we will see towards the end of the video. But before we begin, here's a card to my second channel that is Kratos390. Go ahead and check that channel out as well. At the same time, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell icon because hey, we do awesome stuff with smartphones over here. Now without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Smartphone Tutorials. My name is Kalash, let's get going. First up, let's have a look at the design tweaks Oxygen OS has received in this particular update. If we have a look, everything is now more rounded. The notifications panel, the quick tiles in the notifications panel. If you look at the multitasking menu, the pages are now rounded. And if you also have a look at setting, the search bar is rounded as well. If we have a look at the settings over here, well, the icons have had a color change. And if you also look at the shelf, there are some colorful changes, which is a welcome addition and makes the user interface look more modern and more beautiful. Now, following the Android P guidelines, you would notice that OnePlus is also trying to have all the icons outlined and circled at the same time. However, there are a few inconsistencies here and there, but I'm hoping that by the time we have a stable release of this particular software, that should be fixed as well. Now, the next change that OnePlus have made is to the volume panel. Now, if you notice over here, this is the volume panel, which is different than what it used to be in Android Oreo. And if we tap over here, you have a dedicated media output button as well so if you are connected to a bluetooth device you would get that particular option over here as well at the same time if we have a look at the power menu it looks just like android p but i'm hoping that they will change it with the stable release because oneplus is known to have rounded icons for reboot as we always have seen with oneplus devices and oxygen os now the recent menu is something interesting over here it has received a complete overhaul the pages are now more visible this is basically a horizontal scrolling menu instead of the vertical one that we had earlier the app previews are much much larger now in order to close an app you can just swipe up and if you wish to go ahead and close all the apps together you can just press the x button what has also changed with this particular multitasking menu is that if you enter the multitasking menu the split screen menu or split screen multitasking menu has changed as well if you tap these three dots over here you can go ahead and enable split screen now it is much more intuitive and much more easy to use compared to how it was in Oreo. Now with this particular release, OnePlus have also included Google Pixel's new alternative nav bar. Now this allows you to do a ton of things because it is gesture based and it is very, very intuitive as well. For example, you can slide it left and right to swipe between different apps. At the same time, if you swipe up, you get the multitasking menu. And while you're in an app, you can quickly slide to the right to switch to the previous application. So not only you have gestures enabled, at the same time, you also have the option to do a quick switch, which is not available in a lot of gesture enabled system with a lot of different device manufacturers. What is also interesting is that the back button will only be available when it's necessary. And in case if you have portrait mode disabled and you were to go in a particular app which needs landscape view, for example, I'm looking at my picture over here. If I were to put it in landscape mode you would notice that there is a button that pops up over here which will then allow you to move into portrait mode which is very very convenient although it is very important to notice that this option is not available out of the box there is a method you need to follow in order to enable it i will leave a link in the description to a xda article which will allow you to follow the steps and go ahead and activate this particular amazing nav bar small issue with this particular nav bar is you can only use it with a built-in oneplus launcher if you were to use it with a third-party launcher you would keep getting force close notifications of the oneplus launcher talking about other notable changes of the settings icon or the settings menu now the action bar is here and just below the action bar we have the settings menu which looks a little untidy and I believe they should or they would make it 
just like the pixel devices where you just have the search bar and no action bar which is not really required from a design point of view the icons yes they are colored and the settings menu now have 13 subsections versus 27 which were there in oreo and the settings menu now looks colorful and much more organized if you have a look you also have something called as utilities which is basically the oxygen os touch to this particular rom you have all the OnePlus related features, you have gaming mode which is much more intrusive now compared to how it was on Oreo. You have quick pay, parallel apps, app locker and stuff like that. OnePlus switch is built in as well. Now if you go to system and then if you go to developer options, you would notice that there is a feature called feature flags which allows you to access a few experimental features just like they were available on Google Chrome but this time it is on a phone. Looking forward to the battery option over here, this particular menu looks pretty similar to Pixel devices with Android P. However, you do have usage totals which gives you per app battery consumption. Now there is a bug over here which, you know, the last full charge in the screen usage since full charge is yet not available but i like how it displays till what time your phone would work based on your battery usage at the same time the battery saver can now be turned on at different times or you can choose at what percentage you should have the battery saver on so that is another neat addition over here now moving on to the more daily usage scenario and the small bugs here and there that I noticed, let me see or let me tell you what I have experienced with this software so far. The first and foremost thing that I'd like to inform you that voice over LTE on both the SIM cards is working. 90% of the functionality is completely fine. Even if you look at the camera or the app launch animations, everything is good. And talking about the camera, if you look at some of these pictures, the portrait mode is available on the front and the rear. The pictures are as good as the stable ROM that is Oxygen OS 5.1.9. Now the pictures are crisp, clear, the front portrait mode works and this is the same camera application which has Google Lens built into it. So all the latest updates have been provided to this particular software. Now there are a few more notable changes here and there which are very small but they are very very useful. For example, text selection. If you go to text selection, now it has a small zoom lens that you can see which was not available earlier on oneplus devices home screens cannot be edited as it was available in the previous oneplus options and apart from that if you were to go ahead and change the alert slider there would be a permanent notification over here in the status bar at the top Another neat addition here is it has a dedicated USB menu for file transfer and for all the other options. So that is another great addition. Now, you know, this was all the experience or all the changes that I noticed with the OnePlus 6 Android P beta program. This is definitely usable as a daily driver, be it from a camera, battery stand point of view. There are amazing subtle animations that are available. The app switching is brilliant and especially when you go ahead and enable this particular new option which is available only on google pixel well it makes your experience that much better so the link is mentioned in the description and do let me know in the comment section how did you find this particular review there is something new that i've tried the camera angle is different and a lot of other things are coming up so this was it for the full review of android p dp3 stay tuned for more for now this is kalash signing off at smartphone tutorials until then keep smiling take care and goodbye